Hey guys, today's topic is all about security camera lens sizes. I'm going to show you what the difference is between a wide 2.8 millimeter lens all the way up to a 12 millimeter zoom lens. In particular, we're going to review camera footage, the difference between a fixed and variable lens, the math behind lens sizes, zoom multipliers, sensor size impacts on viewing angles, minimal focal distances, and lastly, we're going to check out to see if lens size has an impact on the camera's infrared night vision. All that should provide you with everything you need to know about security camera lens sizes. So here we have four 8 megapixel cameras that all have different purposes because of their fixed lens size. Now when I say fixed, that means that their lenses don't move. There's no zooming in and out, and no way to change their focus. Their fields of view or their coverage area is consistent. Another name for these cameras would be monofocal cameras. We have a wide 2.8 millimeter camera, 4 millimeter, 6 millimeter, all the way up to a zoom camera with a 12 millimeter lens. This fifth camera off to the side has an internal lens that does move. Its zoom level and focus are controlled through its app and it's called a very focal lens. Before going any farther, let's run outside and check out some examples. Here on my front step, I have all the cameras pointed out my driveway. Let's jump into the fixed lens camera with the 2.8 millimeter lens. The purpose of this lens is for coverage. It's not so great on those details off in the distance. I'm standing at about 75 feet or 23 meters away. You can see what I'm up to, but you can't easily recognize facial features. These details don't appear until I am about 30 feet or 9 meters away. Let's jump into the 4mm camera where you get a little bit more detail at that distance, but the field of view has slightly decreased. The finer details become available just a few feet sooner. As the lens size gets larger here in the 6mm lens, more detail is available at that distance. At 50 feet or 12 and a quarter meters, you can easily see facial features and read the license plate details with no problem. But again, the surrounding area is no longer being recorded with this camera. And finally, the 12mm camera. Its purpose is to pull details from a distance. The details are perfect, but there could be a lot of other things happening around the driveway which are not getting recorded. So which camera should I install at this location? Ideally, I would like to have the 2.8mm camera for its wide coverage and the 12mm camera for the extra detail at my driveway entry point. If I were to just install one camera, it would be the 6mm one because I get wide enough coverage and details are available within 50 feet. Within 30 feet, I have awesome detail and the camera continues to provide the perfect picture until I'm about 5 feet away from the device. The trick is finding the right size lens that gives you the coverage you require. Let's jump into this lower resolution 5 megapixel very focal camera. At its shortest lens setting of 2.7 millimeters, we again have a very wide angle with great coverage. The license plate is attached to my fence way out there at 75 feet. When I zoom into 12 millimeters, the camera focuses and the surrounding coverage is gone, but you gain a lot of detail at the center of the frame. Here is a side by side of both the wide and the zoom, so you can see the differences. Continuing with the very focal camera, let's check out some nighttime footage. We have some great coverage of the driveway and we can see what's going on in that area off to the left. Those flakes that you see there aren't actually ghosts, but are ice crystals that are getting reflected back into the camera from its infrared night vision lights. Here is a view of the camera when zoomed in at its max when it's pitch black outside. And here are the individual shots from the other four fixed camera lenses at night. So take into consideration that I'm showing you the night vision just to get an idea of what to expect from each lens size. These are bullet style cameras and the lens principles apply to all types of security cameras including domes and turrets. Be sure to check out this video here if you are looking to choose which type is best for your situation. On the front of the camera we have the lens. If we unscrew it and remove it, this is what it looks like. These are not meant to be removed or interchanged. These are sealed and if we break that seal it's very challenging to refocus the camera and get a crisp image. A camera's lens size is referred to as its focal length. This is the distance between the back of the lens 
and the camera sensor, and it's measured in millimeters. Now, as you may know, the sensor is the electronic device onto which the lens projects its image and where it's digitized. By comparison, there are 25.4 millimeters in one inch, so when we're talking 2.8 millimeters, we're not talking about a very large space. So let's talk about varifocal cameras a little bit more. Using the cameras app, as I change the distance between the lens and the sensor, you can see two things happening here. The field of view is becoming narrower and the camera needs to refocus to ensure it has a sharp image at that new focal length. This is an advantage to varifocal lenses over the fixed ones. Very focal cameras can be a great option if you don't know which lens size to buy or if you think you're going to be moving the camera to various locations with different lens size requirements. These also work well if you want to zoom in on something within a short distance from the camera. Note, however, that zooming in or out can be a little bit time consuming, especially at night when the speed of the focus is greatly reduced. When shopping for a very focal camera, you may see them advertised as 4 times, 10 times, 25 times, or whatever. This camera here is a 25 times zoom camera and it has a focal length. 4.8mm uh, all the way up to 120mm. It's called a 25 times lens because 4.8 times 25 is 120 millimeters. It's another way of wording the camera's optical abilities in a less tech savvy way. Let's jump into this camera and check out the widest point of view all the way up to the narrowest. There is also another factor which can influence your viewing angle, the size of the sensor. The larger the sensor, the wider the viewing angle. I don't want to dig too far into trigonometry here, but if the lens is a fixed distance from the sensor, and there are various sizes of sensors, in order for the lens to project the image onto the entire sensor from the same lens distance, the projection angle would need to vary. In this example, we have a lens sensor and there is a 2.8 millimeter space between the lens and the sensor. Next to it, we have another camera with a larger sensor. When we have a larger sensor, we have a larger viewing angle for the same lens size and therefore the field of view increases. Each of these cameras has a sensor size of 1 over 2.5 inch and here is a quick look at their viewing angles. The 2.8mm lens has 101 degree horizontal and 82 vertical. The 4mm lens gives you close to 79 across and 62 degrees up and down. 50 and 37 degrees for the 6mm and 23 and 18 for the 12. The varifocal camera has a smaller sensor. When using it at its widest, the viewing angle is 90 degrees. When zoomed in all the way to 12 millimeters, it's 31 degrees. So when you're selecting a security camera, knowing the viewing angle is much more important than knowing the lens size. For me, lens size just gives me a ballpark figure of wider zoom. The viewing angle is an actual measurement that dictates your coverage. Using this number, you can calculate if you're going to capture everything in your scene from your camera's install location. Most manufacturers have this specification available, however some don't and they leave you guessing what the viewing angle is based on lens size. Like in this example here. There are online calculators out there to help figure out the viewing angle if you only know the lens and sensor sizes. But there are a few factors that can influence this calculation. There can be minor differences and variations in lens sizes from manufacturer to manufacturer. Also, some manufacturers may round numbers up or down and that may give you some odd results as well. They might take 11.7 millimeter and in the specification they call it a 12 millimeter lens where actually it's not really. Also, you have sensor crop and this is where the image that's projected onto the sensor is larger than the sensor itself. The exact viewing angle when it's given in specification tells you exactly what the coverage is that you should expect. So let's just check out an example here. On this site they tell you the lens size and the viewing angle. Knowing that 80 degrees is your horizontal viewing angle, you can figure out your coverage from your install location. If you want to do the math, I said I wouldn't do trig, but here, okay, let's have a look at it. Let's say your camera will be 20 feet from the middle of the scene. The viewing angle is 80 degrees. 
And this line is what we need to calculate. It's going to be our viewing width, where the viewing angle intersects. I need a 90 degree angle for trigonometry, so let's cut the viewing angle in half to make 40 degrees. When I tan 40 degrees, multiply it by my distance of 20, I now have half of my width of 16.8. When I double that, I get 33 and a half feet of horizontal surveillance width. And this is the expected viewing width from 20 feet away with an 80 degree viewing angle. To avoid doing the math, I found this really cool interactive tool that helps you figure out these details when planning your camera layout and if you know the viewing angles. I'll put a link for that tool in the description below and we'll continue on to some more examples. I have another test location set up right here at 12 feet away from my back door. Let's start off again with that very focal camera. The coverage is a little too wide. When I zoom in, it's a little too close. In this situation, I'd probably set my camera up at about 4 millimeters or around 2 times. From the 2.8 millimeter fixed camera, for me the coverage is a little too wide here from my main subject area, the doorway. The 4 millimeter is much better for this install location given its distance from the doorway. Looking at the 6 millimeter, I think that one does a great job. If I were to select a camera here, it would be the 4 or 6 millimeter camera and installed in the upper right hand corner of the deck. Using the 12 millimeter lens, we are way too close and the image is blurry. With that said, let's see how the lens sizes affect the minimal focal distances for each of the cameras right after we look at some night vision from this location. First with the variofocal camera. And now the fixed lens cameras. So let's jump in and check out what those minimal focal distances are for each of the cameras. If you want to monitor something up close like a bird feeder or honeybees or flowers, you're going to need to know what the camera's minimal focal distance is so that you can focus on that object. Basic rule of thumb is for fixed camera lenses, the shorter the lens, the less space you're going to need for your minimal focus. The longer the lens, the more space you're going to need. Here's the minimum focal distances for each of these cameras. Notice that the 12mm camera's distance is 32 feet or 9.75 meters. That's the distance it will take before it will actually focus onto a subject. Since the varifocal camera has an adjustable zoom and focus, this gives it an advantage when it has to focus within a short distance. At its widest, I can focus on this license plate when I press it against the camera lens. When I zoom in all the way, the camera will still focus with the plate touching the lens. Let's run outside and see if the lens size can affect your camera's infrared night vision lights. I pointed each of these fixed cameras at my garage door from 5 feet away. Here is a look at their lighting patterns. The camera with the 2.8mm lens has much wider coverage than the 12mm lens. Here is a look using the very focal camera. Notice that it has good wide coverage and a hot spot in the middle for when we're zoomed in. I can get a cross section of each of the IR lights by placing the camera on my deck and filming them from above with another camera. For the very focal camera, you can see that it has two sets of IR lights, one for wide and one for zoomed in. Looking from that camera's point of view, we can see two distinct sets of lights. As I zoom in, the lights don't change. I like this setup because when I'm at my widest viewing point, the camera throws extra light off into the distance so I can see objects better far away. When I zoomed in, I can also take advantage of that extra light. Let's take a look at the IR light spread for the 2.8mm camera. Next, the 4mm, 6 and 12. The IR light projection angles are obviously very different and shaped to better suit each camera lens. I want to show you something cool with this 25x camera in how it deals with IR light at various zoom levels. Here at its widest, we have a good spread of light. When I zoom in, the brightness in the middle intensifies to better see objects at that range. Let's check that out again with a quick replay. Pretty cool feature, but this camera is about $800. Be sure to check out my detailed reviews on all of these cameras, including the 25x zoom camera with tracking. Also have a look at my planning video 
if you're looking at getting a new system up and running. In summary, the lens size number that you find in your security camera specification is just the starting point on its coverage. In short, small lenses are great for small areas like porches, garages, doorways, or small city lots. With the larger lenses, you're going to gain a lot of detail and pull that in, but you're going to lose out on the coverage. They're good for long driveways, uh, garden gates, or any area of interest that's off in the distance. I know that was a ton of information, but I hope you found it helpful in better understanding security camera lens sizes and all of the influencing factors. Links to all the products seen here today, including the PC recording software Blue Iris, which is what I use to record all the footage, can be found in the description below. Please let me know that you liked the video by giving it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more home tech DIY projects that you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.